We'll turn now in God's Word to the Gospel of John and chapter 10. John's Gospel and chapter 10. John's Gospel, chapter 10, in verse 11, the Lord Jesus Christ says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. The wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. So some people are able to paint vivid pictures using paint and a, a paintbrush. You may see a, a painting that a skillful artist has painted of, of the sea and the, the waves and the, the, the colours. And as you, you look at this, this painting of the sea, you, you can almost hear it and, and smell it. So vivid is the, the, the painting that the, the artist has produced. There are other people who are able to paint pictures using words. They have no paint, they have no paintbrush. But as they talk to you, as they describe things to you, what they say, the way they say it is so clear that it produces a, a vivid picture in your mind. And as they're describing something to you, it's as though if you close your eyes as you're listening to them, you, you, you can see it and, and reach out and touch it. Jesus Christ was able to do this like nobody else. Jesus Christ was the most wonderful Storyteller. Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens who wrote Christmas Carol, Oliver Twist. So many other great stories. Charles Dickens who himself was a, a great storyteller once said that the Jesus parable of the prodigal son was the greatest short story ever told. Jesus was a wonderful storyteller. But, but Jesus did not just tell stories and paint pictures with words in order to entertain us. Jesus told stories and painted pictures with words in order to, to teach us. In order to impress upon our hearts and our minds things that we, that we need to know, that we need to hear, that we, we need to believe. And in, in this chapter, John chapter 10, Jesus, using words, paints a wonderful picture. He paints the picture of a, a flock of sheep and their shepherd. Verse 1, he says, I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a, a stranger's voice. So Jesus paints this, this picture with words. 
There's a, there's a sheep pen with a, a stone wall around it. And the sheep go in and, and come out of the, the, the gate of the sheep pen. And the shepherd leads them in and out of the sheep pen. Sometimes they go into the sheep pen for safety. Sometimes they go out of the sheep pen to to feed, feed in the fields. And Jesus draws two great lessons from this picture of the sheep and the sheep pen. And we thought about the, the first great lesson Last week, Jesus said in verse 7 and verse 9, I am the gate for the sheep. He is the gate. He is the way into the sheep pen for safety. He is the way to the fields for, for, for pasture and for life. That's the first great lesson that Jesus draws from, from this picture, that he is the gate for the sheep. And this morning we're thinking about the second great lesson that Jesus draws out of this. The second great lesson that comes from this this wonderful picture. Not only is Jesus the gate, but Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus is the shepherd of the sheep. Just as twice he says, I am the gate, twice he says, I am the shepherd, verse 11 and verse 14, I am the good shepherd. Jesus is the gate for the sheep and he's the shepherd for the sheep. And that's what we're thinking about this morning. And I want us to begin by just thinking about this this fact that Jesus is the good shepherd. And the background to that. And what it means that he is the good shepherd. Because this chapter, John chapter 10, is not the first place in the Bible where we find this picture. The picture of sheep and a shepherd. This picture is found in many, many places in the Bible. It's found in many places in in the Old Testament. The the first person to, to use this picture was Jacob. Jacob, the the grandson of of Abraham, the father of of Joseph. When Jacob was old and coming towards the the end of his life, he he looked back upon his life and he said in, in Genesis chapter 48 and verse 15, God has been my shepherd all my life to this day. Isn't that a wonderful thing to be able to say? To be able to come to the end of your life and be able to say, God has been my shepherd all my life. That's that's what Jacob said at the end of of his life. And from that point on, this picture was used in different places in the Old Testament. In in the book of Isaiah, we we have that great chapter, Isaiah chapter 40. That speaks of the power of God. That speaks of the the majesty of God. The the, the strength of God. And yet, in that chapter, Isaiah chapter 40, we also read of God as a tender shepherd of his sheep. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms. He he carries them close to his heart. He he gently leads those that have young. We've already thought and sung this morning about David. Well, when we first meet David in in 1 Samuel chapter 16, he's out in the fields looking after his father Jesse's sheep. And as we sang in Psalm 78, David was called from being a a shepherd of sheep to to be a shepherd of people. And he he became the shepherd of the the people of Israel as as he was king over them. Sheep need a shepherd. But not all shepherds are good shepherds. 
In Jesus' day, the Pharisees were supposed to be shepherds, but they were not good shepherds. We, we see that in the previous chapter, John chapter 9. And we read earlier in our service from Ezekiel chapter 34, where God spoke at length about the, the religious leaders, the religious teachers of Ezekiel's day who, who were not true or good shepherds to the sheep. And God said that he would shepherd his sheep. He said that he would one day set over them a faithful shepherd like David from David's family who would shepherd the sheep. But when we think of the Old Testament and when we think of this theme of the, the sheep and the shepherd in the Old Testament, perhaps most of all, we think of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And in Psalm 23, the shepherd takes his sheep, he takes his people to, to green pastures and, and quiet waters. And he restores their souls. And he leads them in paths of righteousness. And the shepherd is with his sheep when they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And they know his goodness and they know his love all the days of their lives. And they will dwell with the shepherd in the house of the Lord forever. And we move here into the, the New Testament and into the Gospels, and we, we come to, to this chapter in, in John's Gospel, John chapter 10, and the Lord Jesus Christ takes up this picture that's found throughout the Old Testament of the, the sheep and the shepherd. And he, he makes this claim. He says, I am the good shepherd. And we, we, we perhaps don't, at first glance, grasp what a huge thing this would have been to the ears of the, 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 the people of Israel who heard Jesus say this. They, they knew the Old Testament. They, they, they knew all those passages and others we've just touched upon from the Old Testament about the, the sheep and the shepherd. They knew that God had said, I will shepherd my people. They knew that Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. They knew that Ezekiel had promised that, that God would set a shepherd over the people from the house of David. And Jesus Christ says, I am that shepherd. I am the good shepherd. When Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, he's telling us that he is the one spoken of in Psalm 23. He's saying to, to, to the people, when, when David said, the Lord is my shepherd, he, he was talking about me. When Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, he's saying that, that he is the one that, that Ezekiel promised. When Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, he's saying that, that he is the one who, who shepherded Jacob all through his life. Jesus is the one who leads and feeds and protects his sheep. And he's the shepherd that we all need. We all need leading because we all go astray. We all need feeding because we are all weak and frail. We all need protecting because we all face many spiritual dangers. Jesus says, I'm the shepherd. I'm, I'm the shepherd who, who can do these things for you. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. And there are many things that, 
the good shepherd does for his sheep, but he, he focuses on, on two in particular in this passage. And so secondly, we see that Jesus Christ is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, now when you hear the words shepherd and sheep, what immediately comes into your mind? Well, I guess that for many of us, especially those of us who've always lived in towns and, and cities, we probably think of pleasant scenes in the countryside in spring. You know, the, the sun is shining, the daffodils are in the fields, the sheep are grazing, and the shepherd is sat down leaning against a tree with a hat down over his eyes, a piece of straw hanging out of his mouth, and, and everything is, is good. Everything is pleasant. Everything is peaceful. But the reality is quite different to that. Being a shepherd is a hard work, a tiring work, a costly work. We've seen that for, for David... Being a shepherd was a dangerous work, a very dangerous work. As, as David looked after his father's sheep, he, he, he had to fight with wild animals, lions, bears, to, to, to keep his sheep from danger. As he began his work of shepherding the nation of Israel, he, he had to fight with Goliath to keep the nation from danger. David has to risk his life in his work as a shepherd. And Jesus Christ did not just risk his life for his sheep. Jesus Christ went beyond that. Jesus Christ actually laid down his life for his sheep. Psalm 23. The psalm of the shepherd speaks of green pastures and quiet waters, but it also speaks of dark valleys. The valley of the shadow of death. And, and to be the shepherd of his sheep, Jesus Christ, had to go through a dark, dark valley. He had to go through the valley of the cross. He had to go to Calvary. Where he laid down his life. He, he willingly laid down his life. He, he talks about that a few Verses later, verse 18, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. He, he willingly laid down his life for his sheep. That, that was the event that the whole of his life was moving towards. His, his death on the cross. A couple of chapters later, in chapter 12, he, he says that the hour has now come. The hour of his death on the cross had come. When he would lay down his life for his sheep. Oh, all of Jesus' sheep were lost. In danger. All of Jesus' sheep were held in, in the grip and guilt of their sin and and bound for, for God's judgment upon it and God's punishment of it. And Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, did something to save his sheep from danger. He, he's such a good shepherd, he's such a loving shepherd that he, he laid down his life on the cross for his sheep. To save his sheep, to save his people from their, their sin and punishment. This was foretold by, by the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The good shepherd died and was punished for the sins of the sheep. Little wonder he says, I am the good shepherd. <laughs> what greater proof could we have of the, of the goodness of Jesus Christ? 
as he laid down his life for the sheep. But then he mentions something else that the good shepherd does for the sheep. The good shepherd, thirdly, knows his sheep. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Jesus Christ, this great shepherd of the sheep, he he knows his sheep. He, He knows the whole of his flock. Jesus Christ has a vast flock of sheep. It's made up of people in all places, at all times. He he talks about that in in verse 16, speaking to to Jewish people. He he says, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. In other words, sheep that are are Gentiles, sheep from the other nations. I, I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd, one flock of sheep made up of people from from all over the world. Belong to to the shepherd, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he knows them all. He saves them all. He cares for them all in, in the book of Revelation. In chapter 7, John has a, a glimpse of the glory of heaven and And Jesus, sheep in heaven, and he says in in Revelation 7 and verse 9 that he saw a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. And there in heaven, Jesus Christ is still the shepherd Revelation 7, 17, the Lamb. That's Jesus Christ is both the Lamb who died on the cross and the shepherd of the sheep. The Lamb at the center of the throne will be the shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Even, even in heaven, Jesus Christ continues to, to shepherd his sheep. He knows them all. He knows all of his sheep and he knows he knows them all individually. Jesus Christ has this vast flock of sheep and he, he knows every one of them. He knows every one of them through and through. I know my sheep, he says. Verse 3. It says of the shepherd, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Think about that. If you're one of Jesus' sheep, he he knows you. He knows you in this way. One of my very favorite Christian books, if I was forced just to list half a dozen Christian books that are my very favorites. One, one of my very favorite Christian books is just a small book. Very small book. By a man named Douglas Macmillan. It's called The Lord, Our Shepherd. It's a series of sermons on Psalm 23. I believe I'm right in saying Douglas McMillan's preached here. He was a, a friend of Andrew Swanson's. Before going into the ministry, he was a, a shepherd. And in these sermons on Psalm 23, he, he draws from that. He draws from his experiences as a, as a shepherd before going into the ministry. But one of the things that's, that's very striking, if you, if you read those sermons... It's how he, he talks about the way he, he knew his sheep when he was a shepherd. Let, let me read to you one, one, one quote. He says, just before I finished shepherding, I was looking after almost 2,000 breeding ewes. Amongst them were a great many I could point to and remember the day they were born, the place on the hill they were born, the kind of day it was, 
and what their mother looked like. He, he knew his sheep. And if you're one of Jesus' sheep, Jesus knows the day you were born and the day you were born again. He knows where it happened, how it happened. He knows the kind of day it was. He, he knows what your mother looked like too. He knows everything. Everything about you. He knows what you need better than you know it yourself. He knows what, what lies ahead of you. He knows the, the grace and the strength you're, you're going to need in, in the days to come. And he knows what to do. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. He knows all of his sheep. He knows them individually. And he adds, his sheep know him. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. They, they don't recognize verses 4 and 5, a stranger's voice, but they, but they know the voice of their shepherd. They know him. They trust him. They love him. They follow him. And then Jesus says something quite remarkable. Look at what he says in verses 14 and 15. He, he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. If, if you're one of Jesus' sheep, your relationship with, with Jesus the shepherd is so Close, so deep, so real that in some way it is like the relationship between God the Father and God the Son. Isn't that a wonderful thing? So Jesus Christ is the good shepherd, the, the promised shepherd. He's the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. He's the good shepherd who knows his sheep. But there is something else that we, we need to think about in all of this, that we need to consider in this, this great picture that, that, that Jesus draws. We, we, we've seen that he is the shepherd, but who are the sheep? Who are Jesus' sheep? How do we know who they are? What do they look like? How do they act? What do they do? Where do they go? Well, Jesus makes it perfectly clear in this passage who his sheep are. He, he repeats it over and over again throughout the passage. His sheep are those who hear his voice and follow him. Verse 3, that the watchman opens the gate for the shepherd and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Verse 16, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. That's, that's Jesus' sheep. Those who listen to his voice and follow him. Where, where do we hear Jesus' voice? Well, we hear it here in this book that he's given to us in, in the Bible. All of us this morning then, we're, we're, we're listening to Jesus' voice as he's speaking to us here through the Bible, telling us that he is the, the good shepherd. But of course, there is listening and there is listening, isn't there? You can listen to something and you can listen to something. 
you know? Sometimes you're talking to somebody and they're listening to you and as you're talking to them, you, you think to yourself, I'm not sure that they're really <laughs> taking in what I'm saying here. But Jesus' sheep, they listen with their ears. And what they hear with their ears goes into their minds and, and into their hearts. Jesus' sheep do not shrug their shoulders and ignore what he says. Jesus' sheep do not push away and, and reject what he says. Jesus' sheep listen to what he says and they take it in and they follow him. Uh, and that begins with believing what he says. In verse 26, Jesus said to the, the Jews who were, were opposing what he said in this chapter, you do not believe because you are not my sheep. Those who are not Jesus' sheep do not believe what he says, but those who are Jesus' sheep do believe what he says. They believe what he says about their sin. They believe what he says about his death on the cross for sin. They believe that he is the only way they can be forgiven their sin. And they believe in him. They believe in the shepherd. They, they put their trust in the shepherd. Who laid down his life for the sheep. They put their trust in the shepherd to save them from sin, from the judgment to come, from hell, to make them right with God, clean before God, and to give them heaven. And as they believe in him, they follow him. He goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him. Because they know his voice. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Psalm 23 tells us that the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus, he, he leads his sheep in the paths of righteousness. And they follow him in the paths of righteousness. They follow him as he teaches them what is right what is pleasing to him. And they follow in those paths and they seek to do what is right and, and pleasing to him. And he leads them in the paths of righteousness all their days. He leads them to eternal life. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Do you hear the voice of the shepherd? Do you hear... Jesus Christ calling you to, to turn from your sin and to believe in him and to follow him? Do you believe in and trust and love the shepherd? Are you following the shepherd as he leads you along the paths of righteousness? Do you trust and love this shepherd, this good shepherd enough to follow him always. To follow him in everything. 